Hey everybody, today we're going to write a program for a small soccer game that is a two player soccer game. It's uh, called Free Kick, and then again, it's from uh, Coding for Kids and Scratch 3. And in this program, we're going to learn how to use the if and then statement. Uh, let me give you guys a demo first and then we'll go ahead and get started with the coding. So I currently don't have two players with me, but let me see if I can multitask. So the hand is controlled by the keys and the ball follows the mouse. If the ball goes in, it says goal. If it gets stopped by the hand, it will come back to its original position. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this project and uh, show you guys how the if and then loops statement. I mean, if and then statement works. So for those who are not familiar with the if and then statement, the if and then statement basically states that if an act if something happens, then we execute an action. For example, if it's cold outside, then we put a sweater. If it's raining outside, then we get an umbrella. Things that we do without thinking but computers need to know. So we're going to start our project with choosing our stage. Here's our soccer fill. We need our goalie. Where's our goalie? Then we need our ball. So here are our two characters. Put the ball in the center. We're going to start by coding the goalie and giving it the action of moving with the A and D key. And you could use the arrows if you want. Start with the flag. When clicking the flag, we're going to set this guy to 50. The size is a little too big for that goalie. And then we're going to set its rotation. from left to right okay and then we're motion we're gonna do a uh, where he's gonna start Then we're going to use the forever loop that we used in our previous program. Instead of the forever loop, we're going to use our if and then statement. So for this program, we want to we want we want the goalie to check if if um letter D is pressed. Then we want him to do something. We want him to change positions. So we're going to change his direction to 90. And we want him, we want the goalie to move three steps. Now we're going to code the, uh, 
the letter A. Let's see. I'll put this back into the forever loop. I just it's easy for me to copy and paste when it's out of the forever loop. There. So that allows our goalie to move left and right and changes uh, position direction. So let's test this. Okay, so the ball should not do anything right now since it's not coded, but the goalie should move right and then when it moves left, this, this changes its position. There you go. Now let's go ahead and give the code to the soccer ball. When the flag is clicked, we're going to set the ball size to 75. We're going to give it a starting position. We're going to use a forever loop. We wanted to do a go to so that it follows the X and Y direction. So if we give this a test, let's see what it does. So right now, the only one that moves is the goalie. The, the ball is still not activated to the mouse. And this loop, the forever loop, is telling it forever be at this position. So it's not going to move from here until we add the functionality to move it to follow the mouse. So that's what we that is what we're going to do right now. With sensing, we can add mouse X. So we're gonna do that to the X. So if you see, it's it's following the mouse now. We don't want it to follow the mouse like this because then it'll go off our stage. But we do want it to go left and right. Uh, let's see. Now let's add the uh, functionality for when we click on it, that it'll go forward towards the goalie. So we're going to use our if loop here. So we're going to check if the mouse has been pressed. So this if mouse down means if mouse has been pressed. Then we glide and this if goes inside here. So let's see what we what it does so far. Okay, so it does go forward when we click on the mouse. So we wanted to uh, do a random for X position. So we're going to put this pick random from the operators section for the X position. We're going to set it to negative 
80 and positive 80. And our y. So for this piece of code, uh, what we've coded here is the ability for the for the goalie to block the ball. So when it touches the goalie, it will come back to its position. The next step is to code the part where the goalie saves. So if, if it touches the goalie, it should bounce back to the original position. Let's do that. So this this here is saying do this forever if if the ball itself touches the goalie then we glide. And we wanted to pick a random for the x, so we're going to add that random again. And we're going to pick a random from negative 100 to 100. Let's see what happens with this code. If it if it touches the goal, it will bounce right back. Right back where the mouse is. So the code up here gives the ball the ability to move with the mouse. And the code down here tells the ball if you touch the goalie then bounce right back to where your mouse is. Now we're going to code what happens if the ball scores. So under here, under, under these, we're going to add the action of when the it when the ball scores. So let's do another if. We're using this uh, this special tool to compare. We're gonna do a negative two here. We're gonna compare our y position. We're going to compare where our y position is based on this negative 2. And from there, if it's if our y position is greater than negative 2, we're going to have our ball say goal. For one second. So let's try this, and then uh, I'll explain it to you guys a little bit better. So the ball says goal when it's not blocked by the goalie. Now let's move our goalie. So long as the goalie blocks the ball, the ball is not scoring. But if it's not blocked by the goalie, the ball scores. So let's 
So now that we finished coding these, let's go ahead and go into a more detailed explanation of the code. So what this code does is, this one's for the goalie, so our little guy up here. It uh, sets its size, sets the rotation. We want it to go left and right, and then the position where it should be. It, it, the position here should always be that, so the X and Y. And then, well not always, but that's the initial position when we do the start. So the negative 7 and the negative 5 are right here where he is. And then this forever loop will allow us to do this to if, if statements forever. So the if, this if here, it says if the, if you press the letter D on the keyboard, if we want it to change its direction to 90. So 90 will be to the right, face to the right, and move three steps at a time. This if loop is if loop down here says if we press the letter A we want it to face to the left and move three steps at a time so that's all the goalie does he goes left and right and faces direct the right or the or the left direction now for our ball sprite here we have the functionality of obviously the initial where you want it when we press the flag is gonna go at a certain position and then the forever says if the mouse follows, so if we go with the mouse, follow the mouse, follow the mouse around. And if the mouse is pressed, then do this glide. And then right here, this other functionality says that if if the goalie, if the ball touches the goalie, then bounce back. And the reason we know it's the ball touching the goalie is because this functionality is put in the soccer ball sprite. We coded it under the soccer ball sprite area. So if the ball touches the goalie then it'll bounce back. And this other if loop states that if the position of the ball is greater than negative 2 then it says goal. So if it's a little high, if it's higher than, if it, if it did not touch the goalie and the position is negative two, then it says goal. So as long as it, we, we know that it has crossed that line, like the negative two is an imaginary line somewhere here on our X and Y axis on the stage specifically on the negative 2. So if you were to imagine this as an x and y axis, the negative 2, when it passes a negative 2 line, then it's a goal, as long, it has, as long as it did not touch the goalie. And uh, that's our explanation for our, for our program. I hope you guys enjoyed this and let me know if you guys want to learn more about if and then statements. And uh, I look forward to posting another video tomorrow. See you guys soon. Thank you. Bye.